Every morning, you reach for the same devices, your phone, your laptop, your tablet. You swipe, type, scroll, and click without thinking. Behind each screen are companies that quietly decide the rules of your digital life, what you can see, what you can share, and even what you can build. Microsoft, Apple, Google. These names are everywhere, yet most of us barely notice them. But what if those rules weren't as neutral as we think? What if the systems that run your devices were quietly being rewritten, not just updated, but redesigned to control how millions of people connect, work, and live online? In the heart of China's tech capital, a massive shift is underway. It's not about a flashy phone or a new app. It's something deeper, something that could change the very foundation of the digital world, from your home devices to entire government networks. Right now, over 800 million devices are running this new system, and the number is growing. That's not a small startup experiment. That's a digital force moving under the radar, and it could challenge the rules most of us take for granted. To understand how this started and why it matters, we need to go back to 2019, a year that changed everything for one of the world's fastest growing tech giants. In 2019, Huawei was on top of the world, its smartphones were outselling Apple in several markets, its laptops were gaining traction, and it seemed unstoppable. Engineers celebrated breakthroughs daily, and the company's future looked bright. Then, almost overnight, everything changed. U.S. sanctions hit, cutting off Huawei from Google services, essential Android updates, and the chips that powered its devices. Imagine building a high-speed car, only to suddenly lose access to fuel, tires, and the engine parts that make it run. Overnight, Huawei was facing a digital blackout. Inside Huawei's headquarters, engineers were forced into a stark choice adapt and fast, or risk fading into irrelevance. Late into the night, teams huddled around whiteboards, sketching out a plan to survive. Some sketches looked like prototypes, others like wishful thinking, but the message was clear. If we can't rely on the world's tech, we'll build our own. Harmony OS began quietly during those tense months. It wasn't launched with fanfare. It wasn't about marketing or brand prestige. It was a survival strategy, a lifeline to keep Huawei devices alive in a world that suddenly cut them off. And in that crucible of pressure, something unusual happened. Necessity began to drive innovation at every layer, from software to hardware, from phones to full ecosystems. What started as a fallback wasn't just a patch. It was the blueprint for a new way of thinking about digital independence, a foundation that would eventually grow far beyond phones. Harmony OS Next isn't just another operating system. Unlike Windows, Mac OS, or Android, it's built from the ground up with no reliance on Linux, Google services, or foreign code. Think of it like this. Most operating systems are like a sprawling mansion, beautiful, but with hundreds of doors and windows that hackers or outside forces can sneak through. Harmony OS uses a micro-kernel architecture, a tiny, heavily guarded front door that controls everything inside. According to cybersecurity firm Chihu 360, this design reduces the attack surface to just one one-thousandth of windows. Fewer doors, fewer vulnerabilities. But security is only part of the story. Harmony OS Next is designed to work seamlessly with Huawei-made chips, like the Kirin 96C in laptops, and the Ascend 910 BAI processors in data centers. That close integration lets the system do things most operating systems can't. It manages power more efficiently, runs AI computations faster, and even lets devices share resources in real time. Imagine dragging a file from your phone to your laptop, editing it on a tablet, and printing it from a smart appliance, all without uploading anything to the cloud. That's the kind of deep hardware software synergy Huawei is aiming for. In short, Harmony OS Next is more than software. It's a fully controlled ecosystem designed to be fast, secure, and independent. And this technical foundation sets the stage for a broader vision, one that challenges how the world thinks about operating systems, devices, and digital control. Harmony OS. Next isn't just secure and independent. It's designed to feel fast and fluid in everyday use. According to the China Software Testing Center, it boots 32% faster than Windows 11 on similar hardware and uses about 29% less memory when multitasking. For the user, that means apps open instantly, switching between programs feels smooth, and heavy workloads don't slow your machine down. Picture a student juggling multiple apps, notes, web browser, video lectures, 
while editing a massive PowerPoint presentation. On Harmony OS Next, even a one gigabyte, 100 slide file opens in just one second, all while more than a dozen other apps run in the background. Creators and office workers report the interface feels crisp with smooth transitions and responsive animations, giving the impression of a polished, high-end system. It's like comparing a well-tuned sports car to an older model that sputters when pushed. Both get you from point A to B, but one does it effortlessly and efficiently, while the other requires patience and adjustment. Of course, benchmarks depend on hardware and conditions, but the early reviews from Chinese tech media suggest that Harmony OS Next delivers on the promise of speed and stability. Users inside Huawei's ecosystem experience an environment where the software is optimized for the hardware it runs on, something few other systems can offer. This performance edge is impressive, but speed alone isn't enough. For an operating system to truly succeed, it needs apps and compatibility, and that's where Harmony OS Next faces its biggest challenge. Harmony OS Next may be fast, secure, and tightly integrated with Huawei hardware, but there's a trade-off. The app ecosystem is still limited. Today, it supports around 15,000 native desktop apps, with plans to reach 100,000 by the end of 2025. In comparison, Windows offers over 660,000 apps, covering everything from enterprise software to creative tools. For users, that gap matters. Students rely on full versions of Microsoft Office for assignments. Designers need Photoshop. Business teams depend on Zoom and specialized enterprise software. Right now, only about 6% of the top 1,000 international apps are available on Huawei's App Store. Imagine a freelance graphic designer switching to Harmony OS. They might have a fast, stable system, but without their essential tools, their workflow grinds to a halt. Porting apps is slow and complex. Developers must rewrite software for a new architecture, adjust APIs, and consider whether the user base justifies the investment. Some workarounds exist, cloud-based apps, emulation, virtualization, low, but they're not seamless, and they don't solve the long-term challenge of building a robust ecosystem. This creates a core tension. Harmony OS offers speed, security, and sovereignty, but at the cost of openness and compatibility. It's a system built for those already inside Huawei's ecosystem, optimized for performance, but still an island for anyone who depends on widely used global software. The question then becomes, how does Huawei make this island not just functional but indispensable? The answer lies in its next move, the super device strategy, which ties hardware, software, and user experience together like never before. Huawei isn't just building an operating system, it's building an entire ecosystem. At the heart of Harmony, OS Next is the super device concept, where devices aren't isolated tools, but part of a single connected network. Phones, tablets, laptops, smartwatches, even printers and home appliances can now share processing power, memory, and storage in real time. Imagine this. You drag a file from your phone to your laptop, make edits on a tablet, and print it directly from your smart fridge, all without uploading anything to the cloud. Everything happens locally, instantly. According to Huawei's first quarter of 2025 report, more than 230 million devices are already linked in this way. And tests show that a one gigabyte PowerPoint file with 100 slides opens in just one second, even with multiple apps running in the background. The benefits are clear speed, seamless multitasking, offline resilience, and data that stays inside borders. Enterprises and governments gain control over sensitive information, while consumers experience unprecedented convenience. But there's a trade-off. The super device only works fully with Huawei hardware. Without a Huawei phone or tablet, the seamless magic disappears. It's a beautiful system, but with a single gatekeeper. Users who invest in this ecosystem are effectively locked in. Every device reinforces the others, creating loyalty through convenience and control. For example, a doctor in a rural clinic could run AI-powered diagnostics across multiple Huawei devices, sharing real-time insights without touching the cloud. The workflow is faster, secure, and reliable. But that same doctor would lose this advantage if a single device wasn't Huawei made. This is more than a technical innovation. It's a strategic play. By controlling the entire stack from hardware to software, Huawei is reshaping the rules of competition, moving from standalone products to a tightly controlled, full-stack ecosystem. Harmony OS
Next isn't just a tech story, it's a geopolitical story. Since 2020, China has been pursuing a policy often described as secure and controllable, aiming to cut dependence on foreign technology. Public institutions are being directed to adopt domestic operating systems by 2027, and Harmony OS fits perfectly into that strategy. It's not just about faster laptops or smoother multitasking. It's about digital sovereignty, controlling the software, the data, and the rules that shape modern life. The ripple effects are already visible. Microsoft, once dominant in China with over 82% market share in 2020, saw its share dip to 79% by June 2025. Behind the scenes, it opened a new research and development hub in Beijing to adapt its products to the changing landscape. NVIDIA, blocked from selling top AI chips to Huawei, is monitoring the rise of sovereign AI stacks. Even AWS executives admitted they underestimated how fast China could build a self-contained software ecosystem. And it's not just a domestic story. Countries wary of United States influence or under sanctions are watching closely. Harmony OS could become a digital independence package, offering modern tools without relying on American platforms. Imagine a future where some nations operate largely on Huawei-driven stacks, while others remain on Western software. This could fragment the global digital landscape, creating parallel ecosystems with different rules, standards, and controls. The stakes are enormous lost market share, diminished influence, and even the shaping of how technology defines privacy, security, and economic power. Harmony OS is a test case, a window into what a world with multiple competing software spheres might look like. Now, after seeing the tech, the ecosystem, and the geopolitics, the story comes full circle. It's time to ask, what does all of this mean for users, companies, and the future of digital life? What began as a survival strategy for one company has grown into something much bigger, a self-contained, sovereign digital ecosystem. Harmony OS Next isn't just about speed, security, or clever hardware software integration. It's about who controls the rules of the digital world. Every phone, tablet, laptop, and smartwatch running this system becomes part of a carefully managed environment, one that prioritizes independence, privacy, and performance, but also shapes user choices and market dynamics. The implications are clear. Sovereignty is now a product feature. Your software can be a tool for national and corporate control, not just convenience. Ecosystems are political. Choosing one platform over another isn't just about apps. It's about which rules your data and devices follow. Your software choices are geopolitical. The devices you trust today could determine access, privacy, and influence in the digital world tomorrow. Harmony OS is still growing, and the app ecosystem is catching up. But if it scales, other countries or companies might follow, creating a world where multiple competing digital spheres exist, each with its own rules and gatekeepers. The rules are being rewritten. The only question now is who gets to sign them. If this story opened your eyes, take action. Like this video, subscribe for more insights, and share your thoughts in the comments. Would you trade app choice for a fully self-contained system? Which devices do you trust most and why? And if you want to dive deeper, stay tuned for our next video, a deep dive into Harmony OS's developer tools and how sovereign software stacks are reshaping global AI.